earnings from it. If I had 5,000 of those gyms still paying right now, that company would be worth over a billion dollars. That company is probably- That's another thing. You have a lot of these gurus online where they teach this high ticket business model, but they always leave out the recurring aspect of it. So you're constantly on a hamster wheel. Understand the steps that I'm about to share with you in this video. You will be able to step-by-step -step create a fortune. If you don't know who I am, I crossed $100 million in network when I was 32. You have a portfolio at acquisition.com that is $300 million a year. I have nothing to sell you. Well, we differ right there. I have something awesome to sell you. Plus, I'm 35 years old. I'm the owner of Profit Position and Agency, where we take local business owners from their highest month of profits and we 10x that in less than 97 days. On top of that, I own my own affiliate network called the Anti-Job Affiliate Network, high ticket offers only. Way too long to learn how fortunes are built. If you imagine the amount of people that you have sold in your lifetime in whatever business you have, whatever it is, side hustles, gigs, anything, and you were to instead add up all of them together, and then they continue to pay you month over month over month at whatever price you sell stuff at, how much bigger would your business be? Yo, he's telling the truth right there. A lot of the times we stop things too early and we start a whole nother business venture when we could have kept going with the other thing, and by now it will be worth so much more. I'm guilty of that in the past as well. Not anymore. And for mine, a lot bigger. My first big business was called Gym Launch. Gym Launch to date has 5,000 brick and mortar gyms that have purchased the licensing from it. If I had 5,000 of those gyms still paying right now, that company would be worth over a billion dollars. That company is probably... That's another thing. You have a lot of these gurus online. I used to be guilty of this. I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I used to be guilty of this. Or they teach this high ticket business model, but they always leave out the recurring aspect of it. So you're constantly on a hamster wheel. Yes, you can get $10,000 per month from a client or somebody like that, right? But if it's not recurring, if you don't have anything on the back end set up to where it's recurring, kind of like your Netflix subscription, then you're going to have to hop right back out there again to get another sale and another sale and another sale like that. Feast of famine. Worth now close to about $100 million. So I've missed out on about $900 million during my career just from that one company alone Man. because it took me so long to learn what I'm about to share with you. The big problem that most people have when they are starting their business is that they are in the selling business, not in the reorder business. Boom. So let me explain what he's talking about right there. Um, something like toothpaste. They can do a commercial for that. It'll attract you. You'll go out there and you'll get your Colgate or your Crest toothpaste. But guess what? Even if you do not see their commercial again, you'll end up paying for it again. They don't have to constantly continue spending money on advertising to get you to come back or to get new customers if they didn't want to. They can shut it off. Same thing with Netflix. You saw a Netflix advertisement and then you got a Netflix account or through word of mouth, you got a Netflix account, but they never had to advertise to you again. But every month you constantly pay for it. So how do you create a product like that where people will constantly pay for it even when you're not advertising for it? They don't have recurring revenue. They have one-time sales. And you see these merch shops and these things where people are just selling crap and they get the one-time purchase and no one buys again. The reason they can't make money is because they have no compounding vehicle. What that means is that if I sell somebody today, I want to get credit for that person that I sold today in a year. So how can you create something like that? What can you do with your offer that you currently have right now? What service can you add to it where when they purchase it, whether it's maintenance to it, let's say you have, you know, a vehicle. OK, so you do car lots or something, you sell cars, you know, uh, you can set up a mechanic shop in there as well to where they don't have to go and get their car worked on by somebody else. They can pay some, something monthly or pay something where they have to keep coming back to get their oil changes there or something like that. So how can you set up something uh, where it's a compounding effect and they can continuously come back to pay you even though you only sold to them once? What happens is if you don't have that, then you're always selling for tomorrow. You're always selling for the paycheck this month. You're always selling to pay rent rather than benefiting from a sale you made 10 years ago and having that person still. I'm guilty of that, bro. I know a lot of you guys are guilty of that as well. Like you made sales, you made a sale that was so big and chunky that you didn't really have to work for like two or three months. But then that last month is coming upon you and the fear starts to set in. How do you make another sale that damn big again? See, if you had a thought about that when you made the initial sale, like, damn, I should set something up, even if it's not the same price, something that can keep me sustainable while I continuously, uh, you know, advertise or market for new clients. At least I won't be in this state of urgency. You understand? Will pay you today because the thing is that you need to harness time. The people who understand wealth understand time. If time is a liability against you, it means you're thinking like a poor person. For the wealthy, oh, oh my god, oh my god, is he telling the truth? Is he preaching right here? Is Alex Barbosi preaching? Listen, I teach my students time travel effect. Okay, if you can fast forward to maybe five or ten years in the future, what would your business look like? What type of uh, decisions would you make on a daily basis? How would your day even run? What type of clients would you even deal with? What would you charge them? Then you travel back here in the present and you actually start doing that right now. You can't just wait and like one day, eventually I'm going to be doing this and I'm going to be running like that and you think it's going to magically happen. No, you actually have to become that person from the future right now.
time becomes an asset because the longer you wait, the more you win. If you imagine a business as a wall of glue and you're blowing people at it, if you never even increase the amount of people you sell, let's just say you sell one person a week. In 10 years, you'd have 500 customers every month who pay you. And if you have any price point that is reasonable, that is a lot of money. That is a fortune. And the reason people don't have that happen is because they don't get it and they're only thinking about the short sale for tomorrow. Like I said, in the past, I was guilty of this. Only thinking about the short sale. Like, damn, if I get the person to pay me 10 this, 20 this, 30,000 this, even on my site right now, Profit Position, you'll see we have a $100,000 offer right now. But guess what? We're smart enough to have something on the back end where it's recurring to make sure that it's not a one-time sale. Even though $100,000 is most of you guys' yearly salary or more than that, you know, we still understand that $100,000 is going to keep you fed, all right? The easiest question that I like to ask when we're analyzing one of the businesses that we're thinking about purchasing is, is there a way that we can get someone to buy this and never stop paying for it? Is there a way that we can make this so good, the moment their card changes or they get a new credit card, they call us ahead of time because they don't want to stop receiving value. If your phone gets changed, your phone carrier and your credit card goes out, what do you do? You call your phone carrier and you replace it because the value. That's real because you need that phone. <laughs> so how do you create the phone effect? How do you create a product or a service where like you don't have to hunt them down for a rent or payment or something like that? They're like, damn, if I don't pay this bill right here or if I don't pay this this month, then something breaks down, sh something shuts down. Now, I talked about a theme park product, creating a theme park product, and I'll give you an example of a theme park product. A, a good example of a theme park product that you guys might know of would be either ClickFunnels or Builderall. All right, so I'll explain this. A builder raw is like a um, all-in-one marketing suite. So you pay a one monthly fee, right? So you pay up front and it's a recurring uh, payment. I think it's like 89 bucks or something like that now. So what happens is once you get into there, it's not just some website builder. So they got the website builder part. So if you are paying and your site is hosted on the platform, if you don't pay, then your site goes down. On top of that, they have the email marketing suite in there. So you're building a list inside there. And then they got the SMS marketing uh, uh, you know, product in there. So your phone list is inside there and you can't export any of that stuff or whatever like that if you don't pay your payments. Okay, they got other things in there where you can put your web, host your webinars in there. But pretty much they build this theme park where you come inside the theme park uh you know disney world or six flags or something like that and they know you're going to use all these other sections of the uh, platform and once you build in all these other sections of the platform it becomes harder and harder and harder for you to cancel you understand because you pretty much woven your whole business in there and you're going to lose it if you if you if you stop you understand so that's what he's talking about right here how do you create that effect with your product or service you know we do uh, similar things like that so if somebody get in our school our marketing school or whatever uh is certain softwares that we've created or that we recommended that uh allows us to get paid when they use them to get good results so if they're getting good results they can't cancel those products so even if they left our school or even, even if they paid for our courses or something one time, those other softwares and products that they got onto that are getting them good results, they can't cancel them or they'll stop getting the good results. So how do you do that? He was there. If your credit card goes out, what do you call? Netflix. You're gonna make sure that your card goes through. If your utilities go out because your card doesn't go through, you fucking pay. If your rent doesn't go through, you make sure that it's paid on time because these are things we cannot live without. The goal is to figure out a way to make our value so high that people don't want to stop paying. You want to be in the reorder, not the order business. There are recurring. So you want to be in a reorder, not the order business, meaning you don't want to only appeal to people that want to pay for something one time. You want to appeal to people that want to pay you forever, forever, forever. If you can get them to pay you forever, it limits the amount of intensity you have to do on acquisition. Now, you always want to be selling. You always want to be getting new people or whatever, but you don't want to be in a feast of famine state where if you don't get a sale, something bad happens, like your rent goes out, your phone gets cut off, or you don't have food. That sucks. Recurring revenue businesses and reoccurring revenue. So this applies whether you have a subscription business or you have a one-time purchase business. The point is that people come back. Facebook is a massive company. They do not have a recurring revenue model. They have a reoccurring revenue model. Yeah. Meaning, I go to the Facebook store today, I buy some eyeballs, and tomorrow I might go back again to buy more eyeballs. I don't have a subscription, but I reorder over and over and over again. All right, so let me elaborate on that. Okay, so basically, a lot of people think when they get monthly sales from somebody it means that they have them on a subscription. But sometimes you can make a lot more without a subscription. And this is what he's talking about. Let's say that you uh, have some type of condition, some type of uh, uh, illness or something. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to get refills and it's not always gonna be on the same day like a subscription. If you run out tomorrow, even though you bought it today, like, you know, maybe your first doses had to be extreme or something and it only came with three pills and it's a hundred bucks per pill. Now you gotta go and get some more. It just depends on what it is, the value for it and how often you're gonna need it. So if you can create something similar to that, then you're in business, you understand? So there's some other examples as well. Like what about food? 
Food is something that you constantly have to go back and buy. It's not a subscription. You know, they have subscriptions for food out there, but like going to the grocery store is not a subscription. You understand? Like uh, you might have to, you know, depending on how many people you have eating at your house and how much they eat, you might have to go back to the uh, grocery store two times a week. You understand? So it's, it's just about creating a, a product or a service valuable enough where people constantly have to get a refill. I remember when cell phones used to run off of minutes and then they started giving you free nights and weekends. But when you ran out of minutes, you had to run back up there and it was a certain amount of minutes that you can buy. So depending on how long you talked on the phone with people, your minutes might run out. You understand? But you're like, damn, I need to communicate. It's boring in this house without being able to call somebody and I got this new cell phone. So you run back up there to the Arab store and then you re-up on your minutes. They, the Arabs didn't have to call you and tell you to come back up there and refill your phone. You bought the phone once, you got the plan once, and you just had to keep going back up to refill it. How do you create that? Question that I ask the portfolio companies, and we're trying to grow them early on and really get the product to be exceptional, is if tomorrow you could not market anything, you could not get any new customers whatsoever, and the only thing you have were the customers you have today, and any new customer that you get could only come from referral and word of mouth of the people you have right now. How differently would you treat them? How different would their experience be? And how much better would your product be if the only way you could get new customers was them sending new business your way? When you start thinking like that, you start thinking like the wealthy, not like the poor, who are always in a rush for the next sale, the next paycheck, because the reality is you don't get customers to make sales. You make sales to get customers. Yeah. It's an important distinction. We only transact in order to create the relationship so that we can have revenue again and again and again. You want a customer to exist like a node of revenue in your business that pumps money your way month after month after month. So I love how this dude thinks. Uh, and we have some similar uh, <laughs> principles. And uh, guess what? I'll tell you guys. In my opinion, well, not in my opinion, I use God's methods of uh, making money. And the fastest way to get into printing money is leverage, okay? And you do want a real current model. You do, because then it becomes more simple. But the faster you can get to the leverage, the better, okay? So what do I mean by that? When Yahweh came here or when Christ came to earth, what he did was he started his ministry at the age of 30. You couldn't start at the, uh, before the age of 30, right? But he positioned himself through miracles. He positioned himself through being the only begotten son of God. Nobody else can say that. So he positioned himself as an authority, right? He became a master first, right? And then he started to leverage others. So he knew that other people wouldn't listen to him, even though he could do all his extra stuff or whatever, if he didn't have authority. So he aligned himself with his cousin, John the Baptist, even though his cousin, John the Baptist, was... You know, he wasn't as powerful as him. He understood that John the Baptist had the ear of the people so he could leverage his authority and siphon some off to him. So now he had this ability to where he had a platform where people can see what he can actually do. So now when he went out and did his miracles, people crowded and surrounded him and the disciples actually volunteered and wanted to wanted to work with him and spread his message. So why am I telling you this? Because I believe one of the fastest ways to wealth is an affiliate network. 40% of Jeff Bezos or Amazon sales revenue comes from their affiliate network. They wouldn't be where they are today without all of you guys out there promoting things on Amazon, putting your books on Amazon, putting the links from your Amazon products in the bios of your Instagram, TikToks, and going viral. And a lot of you guys are making affiliate uh, sites and stuff and doing SEO and ranking that stuff like that and running ads to them. All of that money is free money. And it's real current, just like what Alex Mosley was saying, because you have this legion, this army of people out there, these affiliates out there that are bringing you sales on a daily. And then you do profit recycling. OK, but anyway, so this is the fastest way to wealth, in my honest opinion, without risk, because your affiliates are going to be the ones spending their time, effort, money, skills, connections, networks, all of that extra stuff to bring you sales. So this is why we have the do-it-yourself anti-job affiliate army course. I told you I was gonna sell you something awesome. You heard of ClickBank before. I'm pretty sure you heard of ClickBank. You heard of Max Family before. Do you think they run their own ads? Do you know that uh, ClickBank does a turnover of a billion dollars a year? You understand? So nobody that we're talking about in this video has done a billion dollars a year yet. But the business model they're using is the one that I'm talking about right now. They have affiliates, a legion of affiliates in a short period of time. In not many years, they've been able to get a billion dollars a year just because they're an affiliate network. And Max Bounty and all these other companies are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year just because they recruited affiliates okay you're supposed to advertise to acquire partners and not advertise to acquire customers the reason you want to advertise to acquire partners is because those partners will bring you an endless supply of customers for free do you understand what i'm talking about so you never again have to pay for ads or anything like that so when people talk about this roi stuff it is non-existent when you do what we do 
If you have your own affiliate army, it does not matter what type of product you sell. It doesn't matter what service you have. If you have trained affiliates that know how to run ads, know how to do SEO, know how to take the risk from the Google slaps and the algorithm changes and everything like that, then you don't have to worry about investing in advertisement or anything like that. The only Google ads you'll ever have to run again is the one that will get the people to advertise your stuff for partners, right? Facebook ad to recruit for affiliates, right? Once you have your affiliates on the platform, like he said, reoccurring, 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 reoccurring. If your affiliates are making money with your offers that are on your affiliate network, for example, Anti-Job Affiliate Army, Minds, AntiJobAffiliateArmy.com, we have high ticket offers and stuff. So it, it, it increases the dopamine. They they like love getting sales that are high ticket and we make it easy because we provide the training for Google ads and all of that extra stuff inside there. So they're going to get money. So they're going to keep coming back and promoting our offers and we're going to get money when they promote the offers. But guess what? We did not have to advertise advertise the offers ourselves. So there's no risk to us as long as we have this army of affiliates. So don't hesitate. Alex Armosi is awesome. I agree with pretty much almost everything he says, but I strongly recommend that no matter what you're doing in life, I don't care what you're selling, you need to have your own affiliate army. So go to the link in the description right now to the Profit Positioning Agency and sign up for your own affiliate army. We have it to where we can build it for you or to where you can build it yourself. Of course, it's not going to be cheap. If we build it. So if you want to and you want to be cheap, then get the course because it's the same value. You'll just have to be the one to put it into action. But do something, make a move. Hesitation and procrastination, or those are the fathers of failure. You don't want to wait. Waiting does not make things get better. Only thing that happens by itself is things get worse. You understand? So love you guys. See you on the next one.